Okay, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos, which is now the Vehicle Repair Toolbox videos. Here's one of the videos we did earlier on uh, wheel bearings and discs. Quite a few covered in uh, the uh, the older type uh, end float adjusted wheel bearings. However, with the TD5 uh, set and the Puma wheel bearings, uh, they're a different breed. Okay, same wheel bearing, same stub axle and hub set up, however, they're spaced. So we have a playlist which um, covers wheel bearings specifically, how to do it in the manual and uh, otherwise the, the quick way of adjusting. And it's fairly common knowledge, but the Puma and the TD5 wheel bearings are not. The adjustment involves using a dial gauge. So and this is something that I've talked about in videos before about getting a dial gauge because really you do need it. You could cobble something, but to use a dial gauge means you're going to have accuracy and reliability. So here's the playlist. I'll just take you through to one of the uh, videos. This is the hidden secrets of Land Rover maintenance, okay? And we'll look at the manual here. You can go and watch the videos. I'll put a playlist uh, down below so you can then carry on and uh, watch them if you like. But I'm just going to cover the basics with the Puma Axle which is relevant to the TD5 axle. Okay, so we had a bearing failure, which always take advantage of things like this because uh, I'll show off my skills. I can actually snick uh, bearings without damaging the stub. Not something you should do. Use a puller if your race is stuck. Now, usually when a bearing burns out, it will take the hub with it, okay? Hopefully you'll never get to this situation and you only get bearings that have got a little bit of play in it. However, when you get in a situation like this, you're talking about putting another stub axle on, uh, another hub, wheel bearings, and then having to set the uh, preload, or sorry, it's end float, or zero end float, onto the wheel bearings. And yeah, they're, um, unfortunately, it can be quite expensive. But this tutorial will show you how to set the uh, wheel bearings using a selective spacer rather than going back a step and fitting a retro kit which you can get off ebay uh, or wherever which is just basically the old defender and uh, yeah the discovery and defender wheel bearing set nothing special about that that's easy done and it's a no-brainer but if you know how to do the td5 then it's also a no-brainer and plus you also get skills to do it as well which is uh, always worth it i have uh, a lot of experience with wheel bearings i've spent like 20 odd years changing them greasing them servicing them adjusting them and i must say the more modern technology that we have they are there, the settings that they have are there to make the wheel bearings more reliable and uh, less reliant on human adjustment. So with regards to TD5 and Puma axles, Peter was actually asking, Peter Clare was asking, can you get the preloaded bearings and the spaces for the older axles? That much depends on whether all the hub and the stub and the bearings are the same. However, uh, Russ was saying that the front and the rear stub axles are. I would personally prefer to keep the TD5 and the Puma axles and the spaces how they are. Getting back to the uh, the problem we had, which we were dealing with uh, last the video, was a, a cooked up wheel bearing. Yeah, and I told you about this, uh, completely melted. And I had to cut through it, and I cut through the spacer as well. Now the spacer is uh, actually quite important. I don't know what colour band this is, because it got a bit too hot. According to the Land Rover uh, manual, what you do if you're uh, assembling the hub, okay, and you fitted everything together, the first thing you want to do is tighten the uh, hub nut up to 30 newton meters, and then rotate it to settle the bearings in, and then you'll torque it up again to 120 newton meters, and then just uh, rotate them and settle the bearings in with the grease, okay. So that's as what Land Rover recommends. Generally, that's what you do with all wheel bearings anyway, to make sure the seals and the bearings have settled. In the relevant workshop manuals, according to the axles, you will get a table of uh, spacer sizes. And these are seen here. This is what I've printed out, and this is what we will be using in this tutorial. If you don't have a workshop manual, can't find a workshop manual, you'll have to copy the data out that's actually shown in this video. 
and the technique of bolting the uh, dial gauge to the hub and then measuring from the stub axle is nothing new this is uh, how you would do it anyway with the uh, 300 TDI or the 300 TDI or even earlier um, wheel bearings checking it with a dial gauge anyway it's a new stub axle new hub new disc uh, new wheel bearings now uh, this is a new space and I'm going to explain about this because this will help you uh, to understand adjusting wheel bearings Okay, it's not actually adjusting wheel bearings. It's setting the end float to zero So basically um, what you do is you'll assemble the bearings with a spacer in there and I'll explain which one it is I set the torque to 210 Newton meters Okay, you can see a rather big torque wrench does go up a bit higher right so the one I uh, fitted was 15.5 millimeters which is purple one and uh, Between all the spacers they're color-coded and they have a uh, certain size it goes from 15.5 to 14.9 now what you have to do is measure the end float okay, and when you get the uh, reading then basically you have to order the color coded spacer because store men are not actually that bright they don't measure stuff so what they uh, what they'll do is just look for something like uh, a blue um, color and then uh, order that okay so if you have an end flow of 0 0.20 then that will be a, a blue code there is basically only 0.6 uh, of a mil between the largest and the smallest. This one being the largest one, I'm not going to uh, say the amount of zeros on here, but this is uh, the one that you would use um, to get uh, to generate some end flow, and then you can work it out from there. So basically, uh, what we're doing is uh, fitting this spacer. This is a bit of brain damage because there's no color code on it. So if you get one like this, make sure you measure it. Um, you push the hub like so, so you can read your uh, end float, okay, the amount of movement there is. We're looking for zero end float with no uh, preload. So looking at this one, you can see the amount of movement there is. We want to remove that movement so the bearings are uh, closer together, as it were. Okay. So using the largest spacer, okay, this is a TOF uh, one with loads of zeros, and this is the purple uh, um, designation, okay, that I said already is the largest one. So uh, if you think about it logically, 15.5 is the biggest. So when you find end float, what you're looking for is to then uh, minus the end float you have off that size. That's how it works, okay. So I've set this up uh, on the disc and then onto the stub axle nut, okay. You could either fix it to the vehicle and then uh, um, put it on the uh, hub however this works quite well so you can see what i'm doing i'm pushing it squarely so i'm getting zero to uh, um, zero point two zero just about okay now that's actually badly set it was i checked it and rechecked it it was a zero a point as two two millimeters okay so what i need to do is now check um, see the end flow difference which is 0 0.2 and 0 0.225 okay so the spacer I want is 15.2 and that will be a uh, blue um, designation one so I can go ahead and order that fit that and then recheck it so if you look at the figures you might be able to work out there is a difference of 0.3 however the end float is only 0.2 so it's quite generous you get um, 0 0.175 to uh, 0 0.25 which is the 15.2 uh, millimeter spacer which should be correct that is quite generous so uh, um, you've got to fit it and recheck it to make sure it's good so we have the next day TOF100030 which was ordered from Land Rover it was uh, picked up this morning this is the 15.2 millimeter wheel bearing spacer so basically you have to talk the nut up and make sure that it's uh, you check the end float okay and that is it basically the end float is gone and obviously you need to feel as well that the uh, wheel bearings are smooth and not binding all right there's no end float and that's good all right so zero end float so that's it sorted so once it's torqued you have to stake the nut over don't forget this uh, done with a flat chisel okay so 
it looks like this when you're done easy said easy done i mean this is uh for you guys who don't know how to do wheel bearings i've got videos on it okay um but this is like a tech detail so it's just the basics you need to know to get on and do the stuff okay all right then so that's that one